Yes, and I, why I, did you put that out there? I did not. You forced me. Your team forced me to by going on the offense. I didn't the force you to. The to I promise. Look up the timeline to these things. Everything is. Forget it. Forget it. You don't believe what I say. You don't believe what I say. But I, I did not. I did not choose this. I, every step of the way has been an offense. I did not put this anywhere. I didn't. Uh, let me talk to the fucking team. I did not call the cops. I need them to take it. I.O. called the cops. I did not call the cops. You told I.O. to call the cops. I did not call the cops and I did not give them any statement when they came. I've been trying to protect you. I you told I.O. to call the cops. When? When? While it, while it was happening? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry because the last time that it got crazy between us, I really did think I was going to lose my life, and I thought you would do it on accident. And I told you that. I said, oh my god, I thought the first time... Amber, I, I wow. lost a fucking finger, man. Come on. I had a fucking... I, I had a fucking... A I, mineral can... A jar of can of mineral spirits thrown at my nose. I, I, you can please tell people that it was a fair fight, and see what the, ju see what the jury and judge think. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them Johnny Depp. I... Johnny Depp, man, I, I'm a victim too of domestic violence. And yes. I, you know, it's a fair fight. And see how many people believe or side with you. It doesn't matter if it's a fair, fair, fair fight. My ask. Okay. As a result of applying those protocols, what did you conclude? Ms. Heard did not have PTSD. And there were also pretty significant indications that she was grossly exaggerating symptoms of PTSD when asked about them. How did you make that latter conclusion? So one of the strengths of this test, as I mentioned, the important thing about any test used when you're doing an evaluation in forensics is to make sure that the person is responding accurately. And this test does that by not just asking people whether they have a symptom, but asking follow-up questions that draw out very detailed accounts of every single symptom of PTSD. And when you're really familiar with this disorder, which you need to be to administer this test, there are nuances in the way a person will describe their symptoms that have been shown repeatedly to indicate exaggeration or faking. There are also indications when somebody is clearly giving you a genuine response. What, if any, symptoms of PTSD did you observe in Ms. Heard? So um, there are 20 kind of core symptoms that somebody might, can manifest with PTSD. You don't have to have all of them. Um, Ms. Heard initially said that she had, in the first question, you say, do you ever have this, before you get to the more nuanced follow-up questions. When I asked that first question on each item, she initially said, yes, I have that to 19 of the 20 symptoms. That's not typical even of somebody with the most disabling form of PTSD. When we eventually sort of dialed it down, she had three remaining symptoms. And having symptoms of any disorder is common for all of us. Some of us struggle with sleep. Some of us get anxious. Um, it could be several different disorders. It could just be that you have this struggle in your life. And I Ms. Heard did not say, I feel vulnerable. She never really indicated a vulnerable feeling of her own. You'll see then, between emotions. So she would suddenly be one way, and then she would become very animated or very um, uh, sad. And when people are displaying these emotions with this personality disorder, it, there's a sense of shallowness to it. People who are observing them will feel like uh, it's almost play acting, and they might not be able to put their finger on it, but part of it is because of the rapidness with which the person can switch emotions, and also the lack of substance. They don't really refer to, I feel this way. They might describe emotions, they might describe events, but very rarely, and I Ms. Heard did not say, I feel vulnerable. She never really indicated a vulnerable feeling of her own then the substance of her self-report. So when I was asking her information about her history. We're, 
we're going to uh, ask more about that later. I was just trying to get a sense of what a self-report was. Oh, okay. Um, what psychological tests did you perform? Okay, so psychological tests, I, uh, I'll just go in order. So first of all, I asked her a couple questions from something called the mini mental status exam. That's really just a fancy way of saying that I wanted to make sure that she was alert and oriented to, we call it person, place, and time. That means she knew who she was, she knew who I was, she knew where we were, and she knew the date. That, make, that way I can ensure that she's able to participate in the evaluation and understand what's happening. I then um, administered something called the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory 2. The 2 means that it's the second edition. And this is something we call an objective measure. So um, it uh, asks 567 questions or statements, and the person either agrees or disagrees. Or characterologically conducted conduct that suggests they may be an IPV perpetrator, correct? I'm, I have to, I have to ask that again because I yes. stumbled. Okay. I can't Thank do you. character logically. That one's just a okay. tough one for me. Okay. Dr. Curry, you're not board certified, correct? No, I'm not. Not in clinical psychology or in forensic psychology, correct? No, I'm a licensed clinical psychologist. But you're not board certified? No. Okay. And you also have only been practicing approximately eight years, is that correct? That's not correct. How many years? I've been licensed for 10 years, okay. and I've been practicing for about 15 years. Okay. Now, you went to Mr. Depp's home for dinner and drinks before you were hired as an expert in this case, correct? That's not quite what, right. I was interviewed at Mr. Depp's home by his legal team. Dinner was served. And don't you think that's a little odd that you're getting interviewed by Mr. Depp to decide whether you're going to testify adversely against Amber Heard? And he was serving dinner and drinks. He correct? was not serving dinner and drinks. Well, it was at his house at his behest, correct? Yes, it was at his house. Okay. And at that time, you not only knew Johnny Depp, you'd seen a number of his TV and movie roles, and you believed he was a good actor, correct? Not correct. I did not know Johnny Depp. Well, I had seen knew several of, of his movies. You knew who he was? Yes. Right. And you believed he was a good actor? Correct? Yes. Okay. And then you provided an expert designation in this case before ever seeing Amber or having an opportunity to review any documents or records. Isn't that correct? I did not provide an expert designation. That's, that's an attorney thing. My opinions are contained in my report exhibits patterns of behavior that are consistent with co-occurring cluster B personality disorder traits, especially borderline personality disorder. Did I get that right? I'm reading that here. That is not my opinion. Okay. Well, but it's, it's a, a current opinion, but this was not an opinion of mine then. I didn't have any opinions at that time. It says Dr. Curry will testify, correct? That's what it says, yes. Okay. And this is a signed pleading, correct, on behalf of Mr. Depp? I, I'm not sure I understand what that means. What? You don't understand what a signed pleading is? No. Okay. Do you understand that Mr. Depp's counsel prepared this and served it on Ms. Hurd's counsel? I, I'm not an attorney. I don't understand necessarily all of these procedures. Okay. Now, would you agree that a disproportionate number of women are tagged with a diagnosis of borderline personality disorder? No, that's not quite right. 75%? The way you phrased it is not quite right. Tell me, tell me what's right. Okay, so there are more women who have been diagnosed with bipolar disorder than men. It's more prevalent in women. And trauma can cause borderline personality disorders, can't it? No. Never? Right now, we know that there are people who have borderline personality disorder who have sustained childhood trauma. There are also people who have borderline personality disorder who have had no 
childhood trauma. So like most personality disorders and really like most mental health issues in general, there seems to be both a biological component. In this case with borderline personality disorder, the research tends to support a genetic component and possibly a neurological component. And then there is also possibly an environmental component triggering those genetic markers. Now, you've never been asked to testify or serve as an expert with respect to whether someone has a bipolar disorder. Is that correct? A bipolar disorder? Yes. That's not correct. Okay. Ms. Hurd repeatedly and characterologically perpetuated severe physical and psychological intimate partner violence, IPV, toward Mr. Depp over the course of their relationship. End of quote. Did I read that correctly? Uh, it says perpetrated, but other than that, yes. Okay. It says and, that. And you have never been asked to testify as to whether anyone has behaviorally or characterologically conducted conduct that suggests they may be an IPV perpetrator, correct? I'm, I have to, I have to ask that again because I yes. stumbled. I can't Thank do you. characterologically. That one's just a okay. tough one for me. Okay. You have never been asked to testify as to whether anyone has behavioral or characterological conduct that suggests they may have been an IPV perpetrator, correct? No, I've never been asked to testify for that. Okay. 